QuickBooks Online 2021 Comparative Balance Sheet Creation. Let's get into it with Intuit. QuickBooks Online 2021. Here we are in our QuickBooks Online test drive practice file, which you can find by searching in your favorite browser for QuickBooks Online test drive. We're in Craig's design and landscaping services practice file. We're going to be constructing comparative balance sheet. So we're going to go down here to the reports on the left hand side. We're going to be creating the comparative balance sheet from a standard balance sheet. Before we do that, however, just want to point out that some of the reports down below are actually basically constructions from a, a normal balance sheet report. It's useful to know how to construct from a balance sheet or an income statement or a basic type of report because that gives you a lot of flexibility on what you can do with the reports. So, for example, if we go down here to the business overview, we open up the, the balance sheet comparison report, which is provided for us. We note that this is, in essence, just a normal balance sheet report, and they're using this tool that we will use here, which is a uh, comparison to the previous year. So they're just ch checking this off, the previous year comparison, and then they change the name from simply a balance sheet to a balance sheet comparison report. Note that they left the date here as well, as of January 8th, 2021, which is a little not quite right, right? Because what we have here is as of January 8th, 2021, for one you know one component but it's also january 8 2020 so you'd like to be able to possibly either remove this date range as it's not applicable really and the dates are going to be down here or possibly adjust the date range so that's something we can we can consider as we go through this as well i'm going to copy this tab over and then we're going to construct our own comparative uh, report this will be a month by month comparison rather than a prior year and um, we'll do that from a standard balance sheet. So I'm gonna right click on the tab up top. Let's duplicate that tab. And then we're gonna go back on down to the reports, opening up our standard balance sheet, which of course is at least one of the two favorite reports, one of our two favorites. It's gonna be the balance sheet. So we'll open that up, balance sheet report. And this is gonna be the baseline that we're gonna be working with. Now we wanna be doing a comparison. I'm gonna be comparison, comparing uh, November and December of 2020. So I want to compare November and December of 2020. We looked at some of these options in a prior presentation when we just looked at these options in general. If you just wanted two month comparison, you could do it this way. This is one way that you could do it. You could say, okay, let's just make the range from uh, 110120 to uh, say 123120 and then Note that that's not going to do enough. Let's, let's see what that does right there. If I run that report, then I'm, and I'm going to close the hamburger over here just so I have more room. And I'm going to hold down control and scroll up a little bit. So I'm at, I'm at let's make it the 125, the 125% up top. So notice down here, it didn't really do much because it's still really as of December 31st, 2020. And remember that the balance sheet report is not a timing report. It's an as of a point in time report. So the beginning date doesn't really matter uh, for just this normal balance sheet. It will matter when we do some of these comparison items and it does matter when you drill down on the data. So that's not gonna do it. What else do we need to do? Well, we could go to this total columns and make it now months. So I say, hey, I wanna make it months and then run the report. And now we've got our comparison. We've got the prior month to the left and the current month to the right, which is kind of how you would expect to read it normally. But oftentimes you might want the most current month first because that would make the most current data uh, lining up first. And so we'll see a way to do that. Now, if you wanted to compare three months, this is a great tool because if you compare three months, then you're not, you're not really doing any difference calculation. Like if I compare two months, my natural next thing I wanna do is say, well, what if I just subtract those two columns and I look at the difference of where we stood in November versus December and then possibly a percentage comparison. That's just naturally what your, prop, your mind might start thinking if you're analyzing your financial statements and you're comparing period to period two months uh, at a time. But if you want to look at three months at a time, then you can use this tool and this is a great tool to do it. If I, if I then take this back to 10.01.20, for example, run that. So now we've got our three month comparison. Obviously, we can't really subtract one, one to the other because we're running three months, which is kind of visualizing the three months. If we go back to two months, if we go back to the 110120, run that report, and I'm comparing two periods, 
then I'd kind of like this column on the other side saying, give me the difference between the two on a line by line basis. So that's what we'll do next time. That's what we'll do this time now. So now what I want to do is, is compare the two. So I'm not going to use this tool. I'm going to bring this back to the total. And I'm going to change the beginning date to 120120. So we got the month of December 2020. Run that report. So now we're back to this one column over here. And then I want to do my comparison instead of using this item, using this item over here. Select the period. So I want to see the previous period. And we have the custom period here. Now the custom period is nice because if you're using a date range like I did here where we're manually putting in the date range, then what you want is the, is the custom period so that you can make sure that you're picking up the proper period. In other words, if I was to use this drop down and say I was using the current month and then comparing it to the prior month, the system will do that well. Or if I'm doing one year and comparing it to the prior year, the system will pick that up well. But when you're comparing, say, uh, January to February, there's a different number of days in January and February. So if you're using a range that you had to manually put in, even if it's a month, the system can kind of mess up how many days are in, are in each period. And if you're doing a month by month comparison, you're basically saying, hey, I want to compare a period that's January, even though it has 31 days, to another period that might only have 28 or 29 days in it, because I want to do a month by month comparison. So the fact that you have a custom period calculation down here is nice. So in this case, I'm comparing December 1st through December 31st. And then I want to match that up from uh, November to November 30th because there's only 30 days in November. And this becomes you know, more important when you look at the income statement reports where, where the beginning date matters because you're, ma you're measuring timing over time. And we'll take a look at a comparative income statement or profit and loss report in a future presentation. So let's just take a look at that first. So I'm going to I'm going to click off of it and then run that report. So there we have our comparison. So now we have as of December 31st, 2020, and that's the current period or the most current period up front. So now we got the most important period or the latest period up front and the prior period then to the right. This is very typical. Of, of financial reporting because that kind of gives you the information in order of importance now as an as opposed to in order of chronological order starting from the beginning right we're starting from the end we're starting from the data that's the most current and therefore most relevant data going back to the prior data which is less relevant so we have our, our comparison now we just laid these out side by side remember this is as of a point in time so this is saying this isn't a performance report. This is where we stood as of December 31st, 2020 versus where we stood as of November 30th, 2020. Now, the next natural thing we would want to do is say, OK, well, why don't I just subtract those two like each row? I'll just make a column of subtracting each row. So that's going to be our next option. So we're going to say, all right, let's do that. That would be nice. And we'll do the dollar change. That's what the dollar change is. So we'll run that report dollar change and now it's just subtracting these two out so the we were at our, our current period 1201 and prior period we we're at 4321.4 the difference being a, a negative amount or decrease from the prior period to the current period of 3120. so now we have our difference here of where we stood before and where we stood now and you can see that in the balance sheet, this difference column will basically be in balance too, right? So if I look at this difference column and I, and I look up the total assets here, the total assets adding, adding up to a difference of the 2,504.23 and then the liabilities and equity difference adds up to the 2,504.23. So you can think of the difference between a prior period and the current period as basically one big journal entry if you want to think about it that way right you can you can consolidate the whole difference in the balance sheet down to basically a big journal entry it's still it's a transaction that's going to be in balance or all the transactions that took place in that month you can think about as as being you know one consolidated difference or one journal entry and in other words the change has to be in balance okay so that's what we have now this is going to be useful for internal use but if I want to compare it to like a, another kind of company, then I, want, I might want the percentage changes. So we're going to go up to the percentage changes and go up top and say, let's get that and say we want the percent change as well. Why not? Why not? You know, so we'll pick that up and that's going to be calculated if we pull up the trustee calculator. There's the trustee calculator and then I'm going to make it a little bit smaller. 
and we'll say now the difference you'll recall was was the four uh, three two one point four minus the one two zero oh, one and so we've got that difference it's a negative but it's a three one two two zero point four if I take that difference now the the change the difference and divide it by the prior period our starting point which was the four three two one point four then if I move the decimal over two places we got about seventy two point two one rounded to 2 1 right there 72.21 percent uh, decrease now this is going to be real th these percent changes are really nice if I want to compare it to like another company let's come let's say I'm comparing to another landscaping company or something like that and they're larger than I am or you know if you're like a burger shop and you're comparing to McDonald's or something like that you can't you know you can't take your dollar change means nothing to comparing to them but if you take your percentage change in some of your performance datas and this will work quite well on the performance reports like uh, income statement reports then you can say okay well you know what is their what is their cash flow doing in relation right they're going to have a lot more dollars but what is their cash flow doing in relation to mine you know and you can make and you can take a look at these changes you can see this kind of analysis working when people try to mirror something like uh, investment companies on the balance sheet side of things they look at a uh, good investor a successful investor like Warren Buffett or something and they say hey what kind of change did they have in their cash fund or their you know their stock this stock fund how much did it go up and down by I have a much smaller thing going on here but I, I can kind of see you know what's going on in their portfolio versus mine the balance sheet is kind of like the business portfolio within the industry that that you are in so you could do similar type of comparisons and similar kind of uh, benchmarking to other companies that are of a much larger size and you're typically looking to companies that have a larger size because you're looking to people who have been successful and trying and trying to mirror you know what they're doing in some way shape or form and notice any kind of performance measure whether it be in baseball or whether which is just basically a form of someone's job right that's their job baseball players or, or you know any kind of sport player or your own performance in whatever industry you're in you have to use kind of these ratio analysis so it's it's useful to get accustomed to those so okay anyways there we have our our ratio change now if i look at this report then this looks pretty good but now it's not really a balance sheet it's kind of a comparative balance sheet now so i'd like to make it possibly a comparative balance sheet and then this date range doesn't really apply anymore because it's not as of december 31st 2020 it's as of december 31st 2020 and as of december 31st uh, and as of November 30th, 2020, it's a comparative balance sheet. So I might want to remove that. And then typically down here, and I might say I might do my normal formatting of basically making negative amounts with brackets instead of a negative number, just do a little bit more customization. And then I might want to remove these items down below. I'm going to make that as my kind of routine uh, type of type of stuff that we're going to that we're going to do. So I'm going to go back up top and say, all right, let's do that. Let's go ahead and customize this thing and i'm going to then go down to the let's say the general looks good we're going to go down to the header and footer let's go ahead and remove the date time and report basis so i'm going to remove the footer completely and then the header the name looks good but the balance sheet i want to make it a comparative balance sheet so let's change the name up top to a comparative let's say if i can get my fingers on the right key comparative balance sheet i hope i spelled that right if i didn't spell it right i apologize but i'm going to keep it at that comparative balance sheet and then this report period which is this right there i don't want that i don't because I, I have the dates down here and that's that's kind of uh not quite right I, to, and to me so i'm going to go ahead and say no report basis let's take that off and then on the the fonts of the number up top this is in the general area I, instead of a negative I kind of like to have brackets I like brackets I'm a little picky brackets and then let's make them red let's make them red brackets for negative numbers so I'm going to say let's run that report run that report and so there we have it so now we got our changes the negative changes standing out with the red and then we're scrolling down and that looks good so that looks pretty good we got the 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 footer down here is gone and we removed the date uh, up top so that looks pretty good so now, now we've got and, and notice how much more flexibility you have with this so if i was to 
to, to use their custom report over here, then I really don't have that much flexibility because all they did was pick, was pick the previous year comparison. But if you know how to construct it, then you, then you can construct any period you want, any range that you want prior year to the current year, prior month to the current month, and so on and so forth. You have a whole lot of flexibility. Once you construct the reports that you want to construct for yourself, that you can prepare for yourself or for, say, a client, you can memorize those reports. Now, as I'm going to show you how to memorize here, but just note, because we're in the sample file, every time I log back in, it's going to get lost, right? We're not going to be able to save them. But if it was your file, you can then save the custom report. It says comparative balance sheet, add this report to a group. I'll talk, we'll talk more about groups and whatnot, possibly in a future presentation, but I'm just going to save it as is for now. And then I'm going to go ahead and save that report. And then sometimes when I save the report, it doesn't refresh like in the prior tab. So I'm going to duplicate this tab just to show you that it, it's saved properly, hopefully. So I'm going to right click on this tab and then duplicate it. So right click duplicate. Oh, hold on a second. I did something funny there. That's not what I wanted to do. Let's try it again. I think I pinned it. I pinned it instead of duplicating, which I've, I've never done before. I didn't even know you could pin the thing like that. So but in any case, now we're going to duplicate it. And then we're going to go down to the reports down below. And then within the reports, we got our custom report now. So there's our custom report. So if I open this back up, then I, then I, now I have my own custom report, which I mean, frankly, is better than the pre formatted report that they had for us, which is not actually that good. This one looks a not, you know, I think it's a lot better. So now we have our own custom report. Now, next time, what we're going to do is we're going to Think about uh, emailing, printing, and downloading, and exporting to Excel this report. We're going to construct it again really fast next time, just so we can we can uh, start from scratch. But if you don't want to construct it again, uh, don't log out. Go to the next rep go to the next one as you go, and then we'll practice basically exporting this option. It's really you want to you want to make these things look kind of really nice. Because presentation is half the, half the job, whether you're an employee and you're giving this to a supervisor or something like that, or if you're working for a for a client for sure, and if you're if you're batching this stuff together to provide to the client on like a monthly basis or something like that, you want to batch it up as nicely as possible uh, that you can. So we'll talk about you can email it, we can uh, print it, and then we have some some really neat options to export it to Excel, not just to, to open in Excel, but then we can also use Excel to uh, to batch our, our reports together in a, in a way that's more convenient also. So we'll talk about that next time.